Car, big boys touring car racing. A shame, think something new under the sun. So-called young-timer historic touring cars have arguably never been more popular. I think that's since Goodwood kindly gave the category a shot in the arm with inclusion of these muscular racers from the 1970s and 80s in their members meeting when that was created a few years ago. And while the Group 1 cars you see at Goodwood can be raced in other series, if you want to campaign for overall victory on the European historic touring car scene, perhaps in Motor Racing Legends Historic Touring Car Challenge or Peter Auto's Heritage Touring Cup, you're going to need something more powerful from a less restricted era of touring car regulations. And this is a perfect example, the Rover SD1. This is in Group 2 specification, it's a 1981 car and unusually it actually has a World Endurance Championship history. It wasn't only a touring car, it also participated in long distance endurance races. Let's have a closer look. This is where the magic happens. It's got a three and a half litre naturally aspirated Buick based V8. It's actually, the block has got its roots in a 1960s Buick design. So it's a thunderous engine, loads of horsepower, loads of torque, rear wheel drive, five speed manual gearbox, very straightforward, fantastic noise breathing through these huge Weber carburettors. And I'm expecting lots of this. Now this car is a recent championship winner and qualified on pole position the first time out after its restoration. So we know the car can do it. The question is, can I? I've got so little experience in touring cars that I feel like I'm really stepping into the unknown. Absolutely no driver rates whatsoever. on the outlap and as you crank the steering lock in and the weight transfers you get a sense if the car's well sprung
Lights in the higher speed turns. Easy in the direction change. Over the dam. Flash of water. Kicked up from the E-type ahead. my breath that was only eight or ten laps or something out there on slicks now in dry conditions which I'm so relieved that we managed to get that chance to run in the dry because it transforms the car interestingly though there is still a sense of the, the same handling balance I still have a little smudge of understeer on the way into the apexes and a little sort of power oversteer on the way out which is which is all great fun because it's totally controllable and totally predictable but it's, a, it's far from being a refined racing car in the best possible way. It's, it's a bully and you need to bully it right back. You know, the whole driving experience is, is just one big hustle and lots of offset lock and on and off the throttle, feeling the rear sort of sliding underneath you as you load the car up on the way out of the corners. But it's just so much fun because it's raw, it's analog. And to me, it's exactly what a racing car should be. 